safety and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Hello and everyone, welcome to the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House during the previous sessions of the Rajya Sabha and the response given by the government. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat Kane. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to your viewers for watching this edition of Question Hour where we bring, uh, broadly speaking, from the category of three questions, the unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House and answers given by the ministries and departments. So Kriti, let's begin the show. And the first question in this edition is from member Amar Shankar Sapli and this question pertains to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And the member has asked about the number of chemical fertilizers and pesticides banned for use in farms worldwide and the details and list of such banned fertilizers and pesticides which are being used in the country and the details of the effects of the use of globally banned fertilizers and pesticides in human body agriculture, land, environment and export of agricultural commodities. Replying to query, the ministry said that chemical fertilizers and biofertilizers and organic fertilizers specified under Fertilizer Control Order 1985 only are allowed for use by the farmers in the country. Now, any violation of norms in terms of production, sales of inputs as fertilizers that are not specified under FCO is punishable under Essential Commodities Act. Many of the fertilizers used in country are also utilized and consumed worldwide. Now, as far as pesticides is concerned, till now 44 pesticides have been banned for import, manufacture and use in the country. Two pesticides are banned for use but continue to manufacture for export. Eight pesticides have been withdrawn. Nine pesticides are restricted for use in country and six pesticides will be phased out by 31st December 2020. And the list of banned pesticides is provided in the annex chairs and the use of pesticides is regulated under the Insecticide Act 1968. Production and sales of uh, any banned pesticide is prohibited and punishable under this said act. While registering the pesticide, the label and the leaflets are also approved which contains the details of the crop, disease, pest against which it's recommended, dose rate, directions about uh, the use, chemical composition, toxicity, triangle, precautions to use and packaging, uh, specifications. The pesticides are toxic substances but they do not pose any adverse effect on human beings, animals and environment if they are used as a table label and leaflet provided by the registration committee. Pesticides are registered for use in the country by registration committee only after satisfying about their efficacy and safety to human health, animal and environment. And lastly, the technical reviews are carried out from time to time by the expert committees to assess the safety and efficacy of registered pesticides for their continued use or otherwise. Well, moving on to the next question that was asked by member K.C. Ramamurthy from Ministry of Chemicals. The member asked whether the government has made any assessment of the impact of coronavirus in the countries. Pharma industry in view of the fact the country imports 70% of raw materials from China for manufacture of, all, for, of medicine and the impact of the extended New Year holidays in China on Indian pharma sector, even though major hub of bulk drug export in China are far from Corona epidemic center, epicenter, Wuhan. Well, this question was asked during the last session of Parliament. Of course, uh, since then, a lot of preparations have been done by Government of India and respective ministries. But responding to this query at, this point in at that point in time, the government said, the Department of Pharmaceuticals has constituted an inter-ministerial departmental committee under the chairmanship of Joint Drugs Controller, Central Drug Standard Control Organization to address the issue of drug security in the country in the context of novel coronavirus outbreak in China. The committee observed that the present stock in hand of the APIs may be sufficient for two to three months to manufacture formulations. The committee constituted by the department has assessed that there may be impact on import of certain APIs or KSMM and the government further says that under the provisions of the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945, Various sites of different countries are registered by CDSCO for import of various active pharmaceutical ingredients or APIs which are used in the manufacture of drug formulations in the country and the organization is also reviewing all such applications for import of APIs in an expeditious manner for which India is dependent on China. 
And joining us on the question hour show through virtual platform is Rajya Sabha MP Mr. K C Ramamurthy. Mr. Ramamurthy, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, thank you for inviting me on this. So you know, our show focuses on all the important unstart questions asked by the members of the upper house, and you asked a very important question during the last session, which was about the assessment of the impact of coronavirus on countries' pharma industry. Certainly, a very important issue, sir. You know, that was the initial uh, uh, stage of uh, coronavirus in the world. It had just started in uh, China, uh, and uh, uh, my concern at that particular time was, you know, we were uh, uh, dependent on uh, China for various. Uh, Uh, pharmaceutical products that uh, we are having, and in case if uh, China is not able to supply, what will be the fate of our uh, pharma industry? That was my main intention of asking the question. Uh, you know, th that time uh, the Corona, I think, was in a very very initial stage, and uh, you know, we in India we had not uh, yet become very serious on that. So that stage, uh, I asked the question, and uh, the government was very clear in its uh, ideas that uh, there are a lot of local local local. Uh, Uh, hi, hi. Uh, lo local local uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, local pharmaceutical companies, uh, 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 which can rise up to the occasion. And how do you view India's preparedness now? Yeah, it 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 it, it, it really uh, it only shows that you know we have that inherent uh, uh, capacity and strength to rise up to any occasion. You know, uh, not only in pharma field, uh, in any sector. you know our people uh, when it's a time of a crisis or a need they will definitely come up with new ideas come up with new innovations come up with new things there are more than uh, i think uh, for the corona virus itself uh, there are about uh, 75 plus uh, clinical trials going on throughout the country and in different uh, sectors it can be ayurveda it can be homeopathy it can be uh, re regular allopathic uh, things and all that all these uh, uh, you know uh, you know researches are going on i think uh, we should be the uh, able to uh, you know in the forefront uh, uh, in this regard the government has left no stone unturned in tackling this uh, uh, unexpected uh, unimaginable uh, 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 virus that has uh, come into this uh, community now into the world uh, we were not prepared as you rightly said uh, we never even had uh, uh, any ppe kits or any such uh, thing you know our ventilator system was very poor and Uh, not poor it was uh, sufficient for the other other problems such a problem you know we were we thought that we will not be able to face it so uh, effectively but uh, thank god you know we have uh, risen to the occasion and the government has left no stone unturned and uh, various state governments uh, you know they have been doing their best and uh, it is just not uh, uh, it's not, it's not a magic wand that you can say to from tomorrow no corona virus it's all the efforts the efforts of the common man Uh, who has been very enlightened in, our, uh, in this regard? That was a very important activity. Uh, you know, uh, the social distancing, the covering of the, uh, you know, with using of the masks and all these things. It has become out of the day. Uh, even when you go to villages, I we travel, we see, uh, you know, the villagers also are quite aware of this. So you know, all of us are in that uh, battlefield. Everybody is fighting this, and uh, you know, I am sure that uh, the government has. Uh, Uh, definite uh, uh, plans also uh, in case it uh, spreads a little more the government has uh, been setting up uh, extra beds hospitals and the government has been uh, getting uh, uh, the doctors the pg doctors uh, from various medical college hospitals the final year uh, medical students uh, to uh, are being roped in there's so many things that they are doing uh, to see that uh, we are in a position to tackle this uh, menace quite effectively we see we see that's what uh, you know honorable prime minister uh, addressing uh, Uh, and recently in the conference international conference you mentioned that in india has shown that it's going to be the leader of the pharma industry now that is how you know we have been able to <clears throat> innovate a lot of things innovate a lot of uh, products a lot of things are coming up and uh, i'm sure we are going to now they're not dependent on china anyhow we are not that you know because china is not supplying us we are not you know in, in fact we are trying to supply to the entire world yes. so many of our products are being uh, uh, you know asked by various countries and is in great demand Right sir that's a very important point that you're making but thank you so much for joining us and speaking to Rajesh Sabha TV. Thank thank you thank you thank you very much. And let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour show asked by member Kirori Lal Meena and this question also pertains to the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers and the member has sought details about the demand of fertilizers fulfilled in the country during the last 3 years and also about the steps taken by the government to ensure timely supply of fertilizers to the farmers. at the fair price in adequate quantity 
an appropriate time. Well, giving a detailed reply to the query, the ministry said the projected requirement or demand availability and sales of fertilizers in country during the last three years is placed in the annexures. Now, in regarding query about the shortage of fertilizers in some part of the country, at present the government said no, there is no short shortage. And uh, regarding the steps taken, the government say several steps have been taken to ensure availability and timely supply of fertilizers to farmers of the country. Now, these include before the commencement of each cropping season, Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, in consultation with all the state governments, assess the requirement of fertilizers. After assessment of requirement, the department projects month-wise requirement of fertilizers. Now, on the basis of the month-wise and state-wise projection given by the Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, Department of Fertilizer allocates uh, sufficient or adequate quantities of fertilizers to state by issuing monthly supply plan and continuously monitors availability through following system. First, the movement of all major subsidized fertilizers is being monitored throughout the country by online web-based monitoring system called Integrated Fertilizer Monitoring System. The state government are regularly advised to coordinate with manufacturers and importers of fertilizers for streamlining the supplies through timely placement of incidents for railways, rakes through their state institutional agencies like MarkFed. Thirdly, the regular weekly video conference is conducted jointly by Department of Agriculture and Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, Department of Fertilizers, the Ministry of Railways with state agriculture officials and corrective actions are taken to dispatch fertilizers as indicated by state government. And lastly, the gap between demand requirement and production indigenous is met through imports. The import for the season is also finalized well in advance to ensure timely availability. Now the steps as indicated above, Department of Fertilizers ensures availability of fertilizers at state level and the distribution to farmers within the state is a responsibility of the respective state government. Now further, state government have been adequately empowered to ensure selling of fertilizers at the MRP or the reasonable prices and the fertilizers supplied are as per the Fertilizer Control Order 1985 standard in terms of quality. Well, that's it in this edition of Question Hour. Thanks for watching Rajasabha TV. Take care and stay safe.